Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, C2 at DVS, and thanks to Toshiba for sponsoring this channel. World-class storage solutions delivered to you by DVS. Okay, so what are we gonna look at today? A lot of you have been using the mobile product recently, so I thought now's a good chance to do this as a video. Seems to be a lot of projects out there, or certainly a lot of inquiries out there. So two things we're gonna look at. One, the option of the additional 3G, 4G connection module, so that's that. But what we're gonna look at primarily is the 5 Series 4 channel recorder. So it's nice and small and it's rugged. Um, four ports of PoE on the back with aviation connectors. Now this will take standard IP cameras, but Hike Vision do make a range specifically for public transport um, or mobile um, solutions anyway. The good thing with these, u these units are they are ruggedized. So on the front, they've got a removable lockable caddy that can take two two terabyte SSD drives. Now the SSD element is probably quite important because if you use standard hard drives and it's a vehicle that's got you know motion going over like a bumpy road, the constant vibration would probably wreck the hard drive or certainly damage the read write heads. You know quite quickly. The SSD technology prevents that. Even though the hard drive caddy has got some shock absorber. Uh, ability built into it you know that's the way to go with this unit um aviation style connectors so we've got four ports poe standard poe rj45s so this unit takes us a varied range of voltage input 9 to 36 volt dc so it's a very very wide range so for those of you that want to put this on a rapid deployment tower or in a uh, low voltage solar scenario for instance and then this could be the unit for you um, it converts it to standard PoE output for cameras uh, up to 4 megapixel uh, again there are different units we do an 8 channel in the 7 series and then a 16 channel as well a larger chassis more for like public transport trains with lots of uh, uh, carriages connected to it but again we do 4 to 16 channel and even more so on the front standard network connection Boom, that allows you to connect it to a network to get web browser, our software functionality, um, 3G, 4G connection if you don't want to use the LAN. So again, very, very flexible. It's got Wi-Fi ability, so the unit can be bought three options, default blank unit, or you can actually buy it with Wi-Fi only, 3G, 4G only, or 3G, 4G and Wi-Fi. So it's a you know wide pool of options, and obviously the cost is dependent on which model you choose. On the back there is a little removable back plate. This here, if I just present that to you there, that can be removed to fit the 3G, 4G module, which we're gonna show you shortly, um, which we are gonna use in this demonstration. Power connector done by an aviation connector, so it doesn't work its way loose. USB port on there so if you want to remove footage it's got the IO on there so it's a connector block uh, connects in there with IO on there so it could be left right turn brake um, door open that kind of thing depending on how you want to integrate this um, GPS aerial which is important because the GPS can be overlaid over the video image if you want so you've got the GPS the coordinates of where the footage is from but also for our software so if you're using it with our mobile software or Hike Central etc or even the old IMS 5200 mobile that will show you where the unit is again if it's out on the road you are going to need to have the 3G 4G module to pick up that GIS location with our GIS mapping. On the front standard USB with some LED indicators. Now th this is a removable caddy so you can actually do undo this D-lock type, type function lock here. There's some screws we can undo to make sure it's secured in. I'm going to get the key. So in the bag you get a load of connectors for power, IO, um, you know the external device connection etc. as we find. You get the GPS aerial, magnetic as well, nice and easy. You get a back plane, so that back plane connects to the back of the recorder and guides the RJ45 cables in to keep them nice and sturdy. A remote control, some spare fuses, an Allen key, and the keys for the cat ch for the chassis. So if we undo this, oh, this is undone. This caddy comes out, two screws on the back, you remove it and insert the two SSD drives. We can get them populated from the factory or you can fit your own. Um, the really handy thing with this caddy is it has a USB type connector on the back that can be plugged into a PC um, and then run an hour software you can actually retrieve video footage off there so nothing special but what it does allow you to do is if there's an incident on the vehicle remove the caddy and um, put it to the side so you've got time to take the footage off because there may be a lot of footage you need to look through simply take a spare we sell these spare chassis insert it lock it up and the vehicle's ready to go again so you're not waiting for the footage to be taken off by an administrator or the data controller 
caddy straight back in there and off you go. So we always suggest that you keep some spares as a rotating stock for this um, solution. So really, really nice and handy. So I'm gonna do that back up, lock it, and we're ready to go. Now the optional 3G, 4G module. So it comes with different aerial types, depending on what you need and where you're gonna fit it with the Wi-Fi, etc. Okay, so the module, really important. You can see it's a very, very small module. It's got the SMA connectors for the Wi-Fi and the 3G, 4G antenna. Um, you'll see, oh, it might be very hard to see, there's a SIM card carrier on the side there. You simply open that SIM card carrier, insert your SIM card, which once we fitted this, I'll put a SIM card in there to show you that connection type there. Um, what it does then is not link to any specific carrier, so you can effectively put any SIM card in there, wherever you are in the world. So it's very, very flexible. You just need to know the APN connection details, you know, username, password, etc., dial number. Easy to find out through your SIM card provider, and we provide SIM cards for this reason if you need. The beauty with Hike Connect is it will allow you to use it through Hike Connect with the app, um, but also with our, with our software solution, you'll just use, use the port forwarding on a specific port and a registration enrollment process. So it's very, very simple to do. So there's the module that gets fitted inside the unit there. So effectively, it takes a place in, takes its place inside that unit behind that. Um, uh, face false fascia for instance so I'm gonna quickly go and set up this unit now with the sim card in there and the aerials connected powered up with just a standard desk uh, top thing connect the camera to it and we'll see the, the the web browser the good thing with the web browser functionality is it's very very familiar so once you know how to use a height vision product the web browser is very very similar so there's no special skill required for programming it I'd say they're a little bit more of an art to install in a, a low voltage system like this in a vehicle with the way it's uh, mounted and connected up with the vehicle ignition, etc., and making sure it's safe. But again, it's not massively um, complicated at all. Okay, so we got my laptop ready. We got a screen that's connected to the back of this uh, mobile NVR. So if I transfer you across, so we've got the LAN connection that's plugged into a TP Link extender down there. We've got a camera that's plugged directly into PoE port one. And you can see PoE, PoE, bleh, PoE port one's flashing away. P6, network connection air's flashing away. We're powered up. The two aerials are fitted. So we've got the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi aerial and the auxiliary aerial fitted. We've got the power connected just to a 12 volt supply there, 12 volt power supply with a fuse. You can see that's the connector, the uh, uh, cable guide that keeps the cables connected. And we've got the GPS aerial and the antenna aerial connected. You can see up there, GPS aerial, magnetic, and we've also got the GSM aerial connected there. So we're almost ready to go. Just got to fit a mouse in there and the USB port there, and we'll transfer you over to look at it on here. So stay tuned. Okay, so you can see I've got the device on the network. I'm gonna activate this. Okay, I'm also gonna give it the LAN IP address that I want. So this will fit in with the scheme that you want. Okay, so now we've activated that, we will be able to web browse. So I'm gonna quickly web browse into that. So okay, so before we web browse into the actual NVR itself to continue the setup, what you'll see there is this camera that's connected to the PoE port is actually transparent on the LAN network, which is very different to the standard plug and play NVRs that you'd use for a security application. So first of all, we'll just activate that. Very simply use the same password. Yep. Make sure the IPI set it on the LAN range is free. Yeah, so we'll do 29. Okay, so cancel that. We'll set that as 3.29. 3.1. And modify that. So open up a web browser. Navigate to the mobile NVR and log in. You'll see the first time you log in, you need to install a specific web components. So we'll just get that done quickly. So that's okay. Under configuration, 
So that's the model number there. Make sure you're on the latest firmware. You can find that on the portal. This unit is on the latest firmware, so we don't have to update it. We're going to go into time settings, and of course, we'll synchronize the time with the PC, but you can use an NTP server. Serial configuration is RS-232 output or external device. So Hikvision makes some external devices uh, like the mobile uh, smart analysis unit and um, the behavior analysis unit for driver behavior, etc. So you could connect that on top of it. Maintenance, reboot, restore, default, firmware update. Same principles as a standard unit and the web browser. So it's very familiar to you. Security, uh, you've got the whitelist function. Camera management, now click refresh. Now, what you will see is that camera there. So this is seeing all of the cameras that are on my network, uh, you know, in the demonstration room. What you will see is that's the one we activated here earlier. And we're going to add this. Even though it's on the PoE port, it's actually transparent on the LAN side of the network. So we're just going to click on that and click on Add. Type in the uh, password. Make sure it matches. Click Add. Sometimes they do take a little bit of time to come online. Right, online. So you can see there, online, camera one. I've got a hyperlink, so I can click on the hyperlink and go straight to that camera. Come back in there, go in there, and you'll see that that will show as online in the system. In fact, if I go to live view, you can see there's the camera there. Put my hand in front of it. Hello. Okay, so we've got the camera added, and you can do that up to four cameras. Uh, through that method so very very simple to do and the user management you can add your you know separate users in there that's fine now under network there are a couple of additional functions in here so obviously the LAN IP address so you match that whatever your application is whatever your IP scheme is make sure you've got your DNS server in there your wireless LAN so I'm just going to use uh, DHCP because it'll pick it up off the uh, Wi-Fi when I uh, enable that DDNS, if you're using that port, you can change the ports. I'm going to leave, leave them as default for now. Now, the 3G, 4G, this is where you have to program in the SIM card details. So we've already added the module in, and you can see there, click refresh, and it's already online. I've enabled it. So under dial parameters, you've got automatic or QMI, or network mode is automatic, auto search and auto switch, 3G or 4G. Now, I'm going to leave it as automatic rather than force it in there. So what I have done is if I open up the O2 details here, so its dial number is star 99 hash. This is for O2, by the way. Star 99 hash. Username is O2 web. And it's password. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, and the APN is mobile.o2.co.uk. You can Google this and find that out. I'm going to leave the rest uh, as default. Now, that should dial success, dial weight in. It'll come up as dial success. Signal strength is strong. Dial weight in, so it will come up as dial success uh, shortly once it's dialed out. So that should now be online. So I would be able to generally add that to Hike Connect as a first instance and get it online through the 3G, 4G. So what I will do is transfer you over to the app shortly to get that online. So next section down is advanced settings. We've got the eHome platform. So the eHome platform is how we'd connect to Hike Central or our mobile software through the eHome platform protocol. We're going to change it to Guard Vision, enable that, give it a, a key. So one that I'll remember. And click save okay so that's should be the yeah so we're gonna add that to the garden vision um, app shortly Wi-Fi so I can click search and it'll scan my uh, network for any Wi-Fi units or anything that's online so I could select this unit here type in the password and it would automatically connect to my Wi-Fi so when I turn back up a base in my vehicle it connects to my Wi-Fi and if I have the appropriate equipment and hardware set up it could automatically download the footage to a safe online uh, uh, you know out of the vehicle in a, in a safe storage location 
or it just allows me to web browse and retrieve footage as I need and do maintenance, etc. You don't have to do the Wi-Fi, but it's there if you want. So you enable it, type in, uh, find the SSID, uh, etc., and then connect it that way, and it'll tell you the Wi-Fi status here. So if I do this one here, and then I can type in the password there, click save, and then that will connect to my network through the uh, Wi-Fi, but I'm not going to connect it right now. Wi-Fi access point, I can actually make this a Wi-Fi access point. So enable that, enable access point broadcast, you know, fill in the details there, and you can actually use like a PC, laptop, or your mobile phone, whatever, to connect to this as a Wi-Fi hotspot, as an access point, if you want to, to retrieve footage. That's another way of doing it. We've also got FTP. Not many people use FTP anymore, but it's a way of enabling to be uh, saving events to an FTP server. And then other virtual host is on, so that enables us to web browse in directly to the cameras under camera management here to directly access that camera that's connected or cameras uh, connected. So very simple straight away, or very simple off the bat. Under video and audio, we can set the camera up to four megapixel, which we've done. H265, yes, and we're gonna set a frame rate a little bit higher than H265 as well. So we'll set it at 20 frames a second and click save. Audio, if you choose the appropriate one, that's 722 is the default one, but again, we can change the audio format, encoding format if you want. And channel zero, by enabling channel zero, it's a, the default CVBS output will show um, all four cameras if you've got four connected in a very low resolution in one screen, the same on the app. It'll show all four cameras in a very low resolution. Again, it's up to you. Most people just leave it on. Image. So under the display settings, we can actually set the brightness, contrast, saturation, exposure, time, and mirror. So if it's on a vehicle and you need to set the um, mirror type, you can set that to for the um, installation uh, purposes. OSD. Let's change it to day, month, year, because no one uses month, day, year, <laughs> he says. Again, standard, you can drag that round and put down DVS Mobile NVR, so you can just update it. And you can put custom text in there as well. And you can also put privacy mask if you want. Under event, we've got motion, video tampering, video loss, alarm inputs. You can have uh, up to three alarm inputs, I believe, or five alarm inputs on this unit now. Uh, and then you can choose um, if it's high level or low level, trigger level. Alarm type is other, give it an alarm name. Alarm, enable it by, enable alarm input handling, that enables the actual input itself. And then you can do linkage methods. So audible warning, which is a beeping on the unit. Notify surveillance sensor, so app software notification. Full screen monitoring, so that could be the monitor connected to the driver's cab. So it could be an emergency fire exit that's on the vehicle. And trigger alarm output one or two and trigger channel. So very similar to the um, you know standard NVR DVR setup. Alarm output, again, schedules, delay time, so how long the output's active. Exceptions, so you've got hard drive full, hard drive error, network disconnected, IP address conflict, illegal login and record exception, and then what your linkage type is, and then driving behaviors. So what we can do is select, sorry, got a itch on my side. So camera one, you've got smoking, phone call, fatigue driving, not looking straight ahead, absent, safety belt unfastened, and sunglasses on. So I could select phone call, enable it, linkage method, notify surveillance center, and audible warning. Click save, and that's the driving behavior. So we'll try and test that um, in a bit. Storage. Uh, we're going to have 24-7 as a recording plan. You can have alarm, motion, motion um, or alarm or motion and alarm. Again, 24-7 for a vehicle. Storage management. I've got a two terabyte SSD already fitted in this uh, system. So we're ready to go from the factory. But you've got the hard drive detection tools for any hard drive analysis you want to do. Advanced settings, enable overwriting. And then the vehicle. So we got startup. Low voltage protection, battery, UPS or off. So it's 13.22 volts coming off that power supply that we got connected. Now a battery might be a little lower than that. But we've actually got, um, so you select the, the working mode and then you've got auto working or halt delay. So auto working is if it is connected to a supply and you want it to come on and off during a certain time period, you put that um, time period on there. Or the halt delay is you can put it in minutes Delay time is the shutdown. So after so many minutes, then it will shut down after the ignition is turned off. So we'll leave a default five minutes. 
position sit, sat, position settings. So you've got the position module built in, but you can have the intelligent display terminal. And we're using GPS, but there's different options depending on the situation, application, and where you are in the world. We're just going to rely on good old GPS because we've got the GPS connected. Satellite time sync enable if you want, or you can do the manual one that we did earlier. We're doing miles per hour, not kilometers per hour. Speed limit of alarm, you can change. Um, so if you're, if it's a, I guess on the motorway 62 in here, blind replacement days, GPS upload times, and then you've got the different warning types on there. Click save. And location settings. Status has failed. It probably hasn't seen the GPS because we're inside. And then metal clad building. So the module is normal, but normal, but it's failed to get the GPS signal because we are inside. Generally, the vehicle would be outside, and that would record the location as well as the speed there. Okay, so G sensors, built in or external, uh, and then you can adjust the, the parameters for that. Um, you can see there. Select the axis indicating the driving direction. So you have to which way the driving direction is, how it's mounted in the vehicle. That's how the G sensor will then work out what the vehicle's doing effectively. So we got vehicle detection, sharp curve detection, duration two, you can acceleration threshold, angular ver velocity threshold, collision detection, turnover detection, urgent acceleration detection, and then brakes detection. So effectively, it's really difficult to test all these when it's not fitted in a vehicle itself. But if you enable all those and set the appropriate par parameters, you would get alarms based on these settings that you've set there. So it's a lot more powerful than they used to be on the first edition. Again, whether you use all them or you're just using it for playing good old um, recording the data, that's up to you. But the facility is there. And again, quite powerful if you use it correctly. I'll turn all these off because it'll start giving weird errors. Uh, what we might do is collision detection. Yeah, fine. Okay, sensor in. So you've got uh, the actual alarm sensors, uh, high level or low level, pop-up channel, and you can associate the cameras, one to four, whichever one's associated with it. Again, really simple. Storage for calamity. Um, I haven't got that enabled, but you enable it. It doesn't exist. Um, so we'll leave that as uh, disabled. And then smart terminal access. I don't have a smart terminal to access it either. But again, they do do smart terminals. You put the server IP address in there, the connection details, and then SDK or AT protocol, but I don't have a smart terminal to use with this. That's uh, very project specific. Okay, really that's about it. So if I just go into system settings here and get the, I'm gonna write down this serial number so we can add it to Hike Connect. So that's uh, E, Two five eight two five five two zero. So E. So yeah, I got that now. So I'll transfer you. I'm going to share my screen phone with Height Connect, and we'll add it to Height Connect to make sure the four G is working. So what I will do is disconnect the LAN connection. So there's no way that we're cheating here. So you can see now disconnected the LAN. So I can't get back into it. And I promise you, it will be through the four G connection when we do this. So I'll just go on here and then share my phone screen okay so gonna sh add this to the height connect now so simply top right hand corner click add manual add in type in the CEO number which is e let me just get it because I've written it down in my book for this very purpose two five eight two five five two zero click add so it's already found it click add type in the verification code Give it a name, ES Mobile NVR, save. There we go, so that is now online through the 4G, like I promised. Click on the camera there, load the image, basic, change it to HD. So you can see there, we've got the camera there. Now if I went into playback, Mobile NVR, yeah, start playback. And you'll also see playback um, since the unit's been on in recording. So, so far, very, very simple to use. Again, if we choose the configuration icon there, you've got 
the notification storage etc so if i go to notifications i'm going to try and shake this unit with the g sensor in there so the crash i'm not sure that's going to come through that well but yeah um no it hasn't come through look Actually, I don't know if I did notify surveillance center, so it probably was useless. Um, yeah, I didn't connect notify surveillance center, but it would have come through. So I'll quickly go and enable that. But that's very simple. That's basically the gist of it. So it's online to the app. We've got full use of it through the app. We can add it to the software also um, for outside monitoring. Wi-Fi access point or connect to the Wi-Fi. We've got the storage server so you can actually set it up so it downloads and dumps to a storage server offline we've got the usb cradle which you can pull out and put into um, to a normal pc and play the footage back different types of cameras so if you just look quickly if i just go to uh, here for those of you that want to see this and the products uh, mobile products and you've got the recorders network video recorders portable and network cameras click on network cameras and you can see they look familiar to the security cameras but there's different types there so smaller dual um deep in view pe mobile people counting mobile fish eyes so there's a camera for every solution really and um, but they are designed for the mobile applications or anti-vibration uh some of them have got higher IP ratings and um, aesthetically designed. So that's basically the mobile recorder in, in very um, broad overview. I'll go and quickly enable that G-Center thing and see if we can get that to work as well. So give me two seconds and, and I'll come back. Okay, what I have done quickly is enabled the audible warning. There's no uh, notify surveillance center on the G sensor, so you can trigger an alarm, which goes to an input, I guess, and do that. But I've enabled the turnover and the collision detection. So if I bang this machine, so you can see that's the collision detection. And then if I turn it over, again, the G sensor sees that... Um, there you go, the G-Sensor sees that. So that's all I wanted to go through. Hopefully you've learned a lot about this recorder. Any questions, you can use askdvs at dvs.co.uk. Please stay safe, subscribe, um, share, like on, on our comment. If you've got any questions or you really want to use this product, we're seeing a much bigger uptake in this product, so hopefully you'll find the use for it. Stay tuned, stay subscribed, stay safe, and we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thanks, guys. Bye.